Hello everybody, Andrea here. One of my more popular YouTube videos is still and has been for several years is how to prepare for your interview when you are applying for a job at a dental office. So as a dental professional and the, the video that I have is so many years old that, you know, all of the same things apply. So if you haven't seen the video yet, have a look, you can do a search, just type in dental interview. I will probably come up, but it's so many Many years old that I kind of wanted to update it a little bit. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. So how to prepare for your interview, what types of questions they're going to ask and how to turn negatives into a positive, because they will ask you, what are some negative qualities about yourself? You know, what can you tell me about you positive and negative? And that can stump a lot of people. So just to mention, if you haven't yet, please click like on this video that truly does help my channel and make sure to click subscribe. I do upload videos weekly for you, sometimes even twice a week, even three times a week. Okay. Anyways, so interview stuff. So you, you will walk in, they will be asking you questions, okay? The first thing that I can say is truly look professional. Don't wear scrubs or a lab coat, something like that to an interview. Think business casual, nice black pants, a nice top. Don't show up wearing jeans, shorts, a tank top, none of that. Nice dress pants and a nice top is perfect, okay? If you're not sure, I highly suggest going into a store and say to them, I'm going on an interview. Can you kind of help me on what I should wear? That can really help you too. But question. So one of the more um, important questions that they're going to ask you is, well, you don't have a lot of experience here in your resume or you don't have any experience at all. You might be newly graduated. When I started working in a dental office, I worked at Subway. Yeah, I was a sandwich artist and then I literally applied to be a dental assistant. So I had no experience whatsoever. How I sold myself was, well, working at Subway, I dealt with customers all day, every day. I took the evening shifts that nobody wanted. I took the weekend shifts. You meet all kinds of people on those shifts, but I can honestly say I loved it. It kept me on my toes. I love working with people and I know that I will love working with your patients because I really enjoy interacting and talking with patients. So that can help. Another negative could be, well, you haven't worked in a dental office before. Can you kind of, you know, how do you know you're going to be a good fit for this office? You can say, I have never worked in a dental office before, but with my um, college experience in either the dental hygiene program or the dental assisting program, I saw a number of patients and I loved it. I'm new, but I'm also very excited to learn. You can teach me anything. I'm like a sponge. I will soak it in. I'm truly excited. And I feel like I can listen to direction really, really well because I'm so new that I have so much to learn, but I am ready to do that. That is a great thing to say. Another thing could be, well, can you list some negative qualities about yourself? This is exactly what I said in my interviews. I would say, well, a negative quality about me is I'm a perfectionist. So that can be obviously a good thing, but that can be a bad thing too. So I do always want to make things right. And I don't feel good just kind of leaving things behind. So I'm usually the last person there. I'm the first person there, the last person to leave. Um, I like a job well done. If I'm not good at something, I practice to make it better. But at the same time, I'm not afraid to ask for help. Um, and then feel free to come up with examples. So you could say, when I was in college, taking x-rays was probably one of the harder things for me to do. But instead of just doing it wrong 20 times, I made sure to ask other students for help who were good at it, or my instructor, I would ask them for help to, to kind of show me what I was doing wrong, how to do it properly, and that really helped me. And I find that's the best thing to do in the real world as well, is ask for help instead of trying to do something not well and just kind of sliding by. So kind of a negative and a positive about me there. See, 
Doesn't that sound great? If I was listening to me, I would say to myself, wow, she's being honest. She gave a, like a real example of what she had gone through. And wow, you know what? I really appreciate that because I don't expect her, her to be perfect. She's new at this, but I also don't want her to slide things under the table if she's doing something wrong, but is too afraid to ask. And that's another thing you should say, I'm not afraid to ask questions. Um, I know there's a time and a place, like if we're, you know, talking to the dentist, if we're in the middle of a procedure and I'm not really sure about something, I might not ask you then and there, unless you want me to, um, I might kind of pull you aside afterwards if there's time and say, I wasn't really sure about this step here. Can you kind of explain that to me or, um, what can I do to improve the next time? Examples are great and really showing that because what we are looking for and people we are interviewing is basically, are they excited? Are they happy? Are they looking forward to working? Are they going to call in sick every day? Are they going to show up late? Are they going to want to leave early? Do they think this is a nine to five job where they're going to leave at five o'clock and show up at nine? Um, you know, do they have to get home to their kids right away? Do they have to get home to their husband, dog, whatever? It doesn't matter. But we're looking for those things. We're looking for somebody who wants to work, who is willing to work. We're also looking, though, for somebody who understands you know, we know that you don't know everything. We want you to ask questions, but we don't want you to ask 100,000 questions either. We don't want you to be asking questions during a procedure when the patient's there because we don't want the patient to think, oh, geez, is she new? Like, I don't really want her helping out with this procedure if she's new and doesn't know what she's doing. You always have to be a professional Fake it till you make it. That is truly the key. You don't want patients to know it's your first day. Just fake it till you make it. So comment below, you guys, if you have any questions. Please like this video if you like it, of course. And make sure to click subscribe because I do upload videos often. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.